I've come to the conclusion that I don't want to be traditionally polished. Congratulations, you have been shortlisted. You have been nominated in the best poem slash song category for this year's award. In this video, I'm gonna take you through a week of working a full-time 9 to 5 job near New York City while writing a book. I've been making these videos for the past three years, so pretty much the same content. Um, and if you're new, you haven't missed out on much because I haven't posted in like the last two, three months and I'm very camera shy right now. So I'm currently working on a new project. This is a secret project and I have effectively shelved the last novel I was working on which is something that if you've been watching my videos you'll know that this is a project I've been working on for literally years um, and then I yeah I just effectively um, I'm not working on it in the foreseeable future. I was forced to like stop working on that project for like multiple reasons and when I stopped forcing myself to work on it. That's when I realized like all the issues I was facing um, and why I didn't want to work on it. I'm like not explaining this right. I realized that the project was not bringing me joy or happiness for the past year or so. If you watch my previous writing vlogs, you know, I always say, I've always said when I was working on this project, I was like, I'm not really having a lot of fun. I don't feel like inspire, inspired, but I'm gonna work on it anyway because I'm treating writing as work. So you'll hear me say a lot of that in my like videos last year. And the reason why I kept pushing myself was because I went on a writing retreat with Maggie Steve Otter last year and she gave me so much external validation on how successful this book could be if I queried it. And on top of that, I also wanted to be traditionally published and so I thought that this was the right path. I was gonna like brute force this story out with like, I wasn't into it, I wasn't passionate about it, I just treated it purely as work. Um, and I guess another aside here, the reason why I, I guess, lost interest in it is because I think I just like grew out of the story pretty much. It was a YA fantasy and I no longer write YA fantasy. I haven't had a single young girl fantasy idea since this story and I came up with this story idea when I was 26 and believe it or not I'm turning 30 this year so it's been like a long time coming since I had the idea and like implementing the edits now and going through revisions it was not very interesting to me sorry I don't know if I made it clear I was in the middle of revising the book to query like that was the state the book was in before I kind of set it aside indefinitely. Anyway, I'm all over the place for sure, but like when I was forced to stop working on it because I was moving and I started a new job, it made me realize that I wasn't writing this book for fun and it made me realize that I need to write for fun. Like I can't write for the sake of writing. I need to write something that I want to write, especially because I already have like so many things going on in my life. Not only am I working a full-time job, I'm also a CEO. <laughs> um, I just um, officially got my LLC for my editing business, Bramble and Crow Books, which is now also something I can use if I decide to self-publish one day. But anyway, I'm like a businesswoman. Um, I have my own company. I'm working a nine to five job. I'm trying to write. And I also volunteer at Augur Magazine, which is a Canadian literary publisher, literary, <laughs> This bird is distracting me. A Canadian literary science fiction and fantasy publisher and I volunteer there. So I'm like juggling so many things that if I'm writing something I'm not like having fun with or it's not interesting to me, it becomes like I, I had my creativity sapped out of me. Um, and I swear, I swear to God, like I'm not even joking. In February, I really thought I was never gonna write again. I just had no creativity because that was before I realized I was forcing myself to work on this book that I had no enjoyment. Um, the second part of this, I'm hoping you're following, I'm sorry. And the second part of this was the traditionally published stuff that I mentioned previously, which is that I was forcing myself to work on this because I wanted to be traditionally published and because I could see the commercial success of the story idea. It's a young adult fantasy, it's a retelling, those are really popular. And I got so much external validation from Maggie. Um, it made me want to finish this, but 
I've come to the conclusion that I don't want to be traditionally published. I'm not saying like never, but it's definitely not something that I am like trying to actively pursue now. Um, what I'm trying to actively pursue is really cheesy, but it's uh, my happiness and it's writing for fun. I, I really just want to write for fun. And the moment I dropped the pressure of like querying or trying to make this book like a commercial success, um, my creativity came back. As I mentioned, I really thought I was not gonna be writing anymore um in february because i just like i had no creativity and i guess there was a lot going on like in my last video you could tell i think you could tell i was like not feeling it but since i dropped the idea that i want to be published i felt so much better <laughs> i felt so much happier i felt so much more creative and i think what i'm gonna do now is kind of like <laughs> sorry my eye is like the contact is drying up my eye, it, like keeps moving whenever I blink. My idea now for publishing is that it's like finding a partner. You know, you're gonna do your own thing and if you find someone that like matches you and is compatible with you and you like being around this person, you know, then you enter a relationship with them. So from, from my perspective now, what I'm gonna be doing is the same thing. I'm still gonna be writing. And if it so happens to be in a point where I think like, hey, you know, this could be ready to be published, then I'm gonna query, then I'm gonna do that but until then i'm just gonna work on myself in that metaphor i'm just gonna keep writing my book keep focusing on what makes me happy which is like writing for fun and writing the books i want to write regardless of like market genre and my i don't know how my context of doing this right now was fine also there are a few things about trad pub that i'm really like displeased with um a lot of things that i see reoccurring happening in traditional publishing and it just it's just not appealing to me at the moment oh also another reason why i was like so compelled to work on the novel to be traditionally published was because of my peers and i wouldn't say um what i was feeling was like fomo um although i'm sure part of it was like maybe like 10 percent, 20 percent. but really what it was was that a lot of my peers were pursuing the same thing as i was and i wanted to be part of that process again not so much in a FOMO way but more in a way that like I wanted to be in this together kind of like when you're in school and you're working on a like you're working toward the major and you and your friends all take the same class it's not because you necessarily feel FOMO it's more so like we're gonna help each other we're gonna go through this together we're gonna you know work on projects together we're gonna like it, it was more so like that as opposed to FOMO, but then again, I do think FOMO accounted for like 10% of it, 20% of it. I kind of like don't have that anymore right now just because I dropped the idea of like, I want to make traditional publishing like my end all be all because I dropped that. I don't really feel like that anymore. Um, and I do think that every writer like has their own path. Every path is valid. Um, and it also kind of like brings back to that video I made last year when I said I was 29 and unpublished. Like you don't need to be published by a certain age. I just... I just like doing <laughs> I just want to do my own thing and if anything I think I'll self-publish before traditionally publish because or try to traditionally publish because I don't know I find a lot of um I find like the political climate in traditional publishing is very negative um I find that um a lot of authors are really <laughs> mean to other authors when they're traditionally published I'm sure there are stories like that in self-publishing too but for some reason I just feel like trad pub you're literally on your own you have no support from anyone it's hard to be friends with anyone i don't know just for some reason i feel like when you're a self-published author i don't know maybe i'm just not in the right community in the right space but i feel like it's a lot more helpful i feel like people are more willing to help each other because it's harder to be <laughs> i think it's health i think it's hard to be a self-published author you have to put things you know out of pocket pull things out of pocket and i think the moment you do that you're like a little bit more invested in, so you're more willing to help others i don't know like um anyway my point is that i just like don't care about being traditionally published at the moment. It's I, I never expected that I would say that coming out of my mouth because I've wanted to be traditionally published since I was like 10 years old, eight, um, since I could start writing. But just, I felt a lot of pressure. Like I felt a lot, I it wasn't even, I wasn't even, I didn't even have an agent. I didn't even have like a book. And I, I still felt like relieved that I didn't have to like write for anyone. I could just do things myself. So yeah, so that's why I have effectively shelved the young adult fantasy and i'm currently working on another book this is a secret secret project i haven't told <laughs> i've been working on this for like two months now and i haven't told anyone um, besides my boyfriend and my critique partner and one of my closest friends i'm at 20k and i wrote this like 
end of February, and right now is beginning of April. I also went on a two-week vacation to Italy, which we can talk about later, um, and still I've managed to write so much, and it's crazy because, like, whenever I write, I don't, like, sit down for a writing session. Like, right now, after I make this video, I'm probably gonna edit this clip and do auger work, but I have yet to, like, have a full day to myself and, like, sit down and write. Every, every single writing session I've had was in unideal <laughs> circumstance, and it never lasted more than an hour because I just don't have the time for it right now. Like, if you checked out my community post, like, writing has been very in between. And yet, I'm still producing so much. And I haven't had this, like, feeling of, like, having so many words inside of me and just, like, pouring out. When I was working on my young adult fantasy, every time I sat down to write, I couldn't wait for it to be over. Um, I was like, okay, I'm only setting 30 minutes. I just need to work for 30 minutes. And, like, I just couldn't wait for it to be over. But now I only have 30 minutes and even in 30 minutes I can get out 600 words, 800 words, like I don't know, I don't know what's happening. I, I do type really fast too, so part of it is I do type really fast, so it's kind of like dictating um, to an extent. I've been writing like on my phone, on my train to work, I commute about four hours three times a week. Um, I write on my phone, I write when I'm doing errands with my parents, I was writing like at the grocery store and I felt like I, I can't explain it. Every time I do sit down on my desk to write, I feel like so happy that I have a desk now and I can like write. It, it just comes, I, I don't have a word count goal. I don't have anything like that. I'm just writing what makes me happy. <sighs> I miss this feeling. I didn't know I had this in me anymore ever since I've been working on that No No Fantasy for like two years, making like absolutely zero progress and forcing myself to do it. I think the reason why I was like okay to like force myself to work on it too was that I know writing's not going to be fun all the time. I'm sure at this point, at some point in this project, I'm not going to enjoy working on it as much, but you do have to have, for me, you do have to have fun a little bit. I'm sorry, it's like getting really dark right now. Should I turn on the lights? Okay, I turn on the lights. And actually what I've been doing differently for this project is outlining a ton and also editing as I go, which you're not supposed to do, but I am doing it, it um, because I haven't written in this genre before ever um, in like the last six years, I think. And I talked about the genre like once on this YouTube channel and I have like over like 150 videos or something. So because it's a different genre, I'm, I don't know. I think I need to edit as I go to figure out elements of the story. But I'm also... Um, outlining so much now because I realized I needed. I've been using Scrintle a lot and Scrintle is also the sponsor of today's video. Scrintle is an online visual board that can really help with mind mapping and brainstorming and researching. If you really like using index cards and like arrange them, arranging them on your desk or on the floor, you can easily do that with Scrintle because essentially like it's like a index card form but online. I've been using this so much. Actually, in general, for all my writing, all my projects, I have it on Scrintle with like a um, short story section, like poetry section, like how many stories got rejected, how many stories got accepted, and now I've been using it to really outline my book, and it's been so helpful because one of the biggest issues that I'm encountering with this book that I've never encountered in any of my other books is actually the timeline. This is supposed to be the first book in a planned series, Interconnected Standalone Series, and the timeline is really important for me and the kind of characters that mingle around across different books. And with using Scrintle, it's like a one view. And so it's very easy for me to like go back and forth between these like different planned series, sorry, books to see where everything is aligned. There's a really quick rough and dirty non-spoiler version that I actually had to delete some things just to show you all. Um, so this is the board I'm using and I have a cover idea and in here I can show you I have some ideas of you know if I were to self-publish this don't put a number on the cover um, because it is interconnected standalone and so would putting the number be confusing for readers so I need to do kind of like more research on this um, obviously I can't spell here's the timeline is what I'm talking about so I have each month outlined so let's say month four let's say book three starts on month four and then that's that's something i would do but i kind of like deleted all my stuff just to show you so if you want to check out scrintle i'll have a link down below i also do have a discount code thank you again scrintle for sponsoring today's video oh yes okay okay client shout out so as i mentioned my company bramble and crow books officially has an llc i want to give a quick shout out to two of my authors who've had 
releases around now. One has just been released and one is upcoming and the first one I really want to talk about is Footprints by Fama Musa. This is I think I mean I'm proud of all my client books but this one I think felt the most personal. I think I was like the most personally invested which I realized as a business owner you kind of shouldn't really be just like you have to separate work from life. Sorry my dad's coming upstairs. I live with my parents right now. Um, this is a poetry prose and poetry collection on the poet's life of growing up in Africa and moving to California and navigating through being a woman, um, being like a BIPOC woman in the US, being a mom, being a friend and it was so, it was so good. I loved, I like loved this project. Um, I love reading poetry and the fact that I was like helping edit this poetry collection, I wanted to do my very best because these poems were so well written and I just wanted to help elevate and bring more of these poems to the author's vision and so you can check it out now this collection is available I believe everywhere um, and if you have a poetry collection you would like me to edit I'm, I'm more than happy to help and the next book that is about to come out at the end of May is called A Memory Song this is by Scott Palmer this is an epic fantasy that really subverts all the epic fantasy tropes that you normally see. Actually, every time I every time I edit this, like I find a new interpretation to this book. Um, it also talks about like climate change and how like climate change and magic can also kind of wove together. There's so many elements. Like I swear, like every time I read this, like I get a new interpretation. This is a planned series. And I believe he also has a novella upcoming. Um, but in the moment, the first book will be out at the end of May. And I believe there's another client project that's coming out around June, but I have no details about that. Right after I filmed this video, one of my clients tagged me in their Instagram story that their short story is in this collection, It Always Finds Me, that came out April 19th. I'll link everything down below. I'm really proud of these projects. Um, I love being an editor and that is my end goal with having the LLC. For a while there, I was thinking like I wasted my time, <laughs> like, starting this business um, but I'm thinking that perhaps this can be a thing I can do when I retire at like 50 maybe yeah so okay I think I think that's all I want to say this is a very long intro today is actually a Sunday it's the what day it is it's the 7th um, I was gonna film this tomorrow like this update intro clip tomorrow but I'm actually going into the office tomorrow my manager requested that my office days are Wednesday Thursdays and Fridays now I'm swapping my Friday with my Monday so I'll take you through my week um, it's gonna be a very very busy week I have a busy work week coming up so today I'm gonna actually do some auger stuff as I mentioned I don't really have time to like sit down and write I am uploading a bunch of uh, issues because we want the pieces to be read for free right now you have to buy to read the magazine um, so i'm going to be uploading some of the pieces onto the website and um, we're also reading through the short list so we are prepping um, and like selecting the pieces we want to publish for 2024 got to read through the short list i think there's about 25 is that right i don't know i i need i, I need to catch up um, also, I need to do my taxes. That's the thing. Italy. Uh, I want to quickly talk about Italy. I want to show you what I got um, because I think you guys will like it. So one thing I think you guys will really like is this print right here. Isn't this so pretty? So I went to um, this restaurant. It's called Romeo, which first of all is so cute. And um, they were selling local prints. They're selling prints by this local artist. And I had to get it. I felt like she kind of like reminded myself of me. You can kind of see the blue at the end here. Um, I didn't dye my hair blue again, but it was blonde before and I put black dye on it. Black blue dye and then like faded because I stopped. Okay. I, I feel like this is like me. I do have two cats. We can do a kitty update. And I didn't realize that Italy like loved cats. Um, so I got this like cat, I don't know, figure um, at the Coliseum. Apparently, there are a few cats living in the Coliseum. I didn't really see any. I thought this was really cute. And, you know, we all know, we're all writers. I cannot get enough of notebooks. As you can tell, I really love art. Also, I have a bunch of tattoos. This is one of my favorite art pieces um, I saw in Italy. It's called Primavera. One of the reasons why I really love this painting is that this woman right here, she's Flora. And she's eternally pregnant, um, which I don't want to be eternally pregnant, but um, 
think she's so pretty. I think she's like really, really pretty. Um, yeah, so those were the, th oh wait, I got one more thing. Oh, why didn't I take it out? I got one more thing from Italy that I think you guys would be interested in. Let me go get it. Also, I forgot I had coffee that was sitting on my bookshelf. This one, Venice and the, I can't pronounce this word. Couldn't find this on Kindle and I really wanted to read this. It's about um, like a eco, eco perspective on Venice. And Venice is a city that's like built on water and I visited Venice. It was very busy um, and I only spent like literally a few hours there. So I thought that I would get more of a deep read on Venice and like the way the city is constructed. I feel like it's very interesting. Can definitely also lead to some cool world building stuff. Um, but yeah, those were all the things I got from Italy I wanted to show you. And I think I've talked way too much in this intro clip. I'll have timestamps down below. Wait, I want to show you my keyboard really quick before we end this really long update. Look at this keyboard. Isn't this so cute? I literally can't get over these freaking paw pads. <laughs> Space. Isn't this so cute? Oh my god, I'm literally obsessed. It's a little past 8. It's the next day. I kind of not in a vlogging mood. I wrote 39 words yesterday and it's because I got home at like 7.30. I left the house at 6.35. I had to stay late yesterday. I realized I had an auger meeting during my commute so I jumped onto my auger meeting after I worked down some dinner. I literally added one line so that wasn't much. Today, I don't think I'll be writing again until the evening because I realized just how much work I had for Augur during that meeting yesterday. I need to read through- I read through the poetry shortlist on Sunday, but I need to read through the fiction. And I also need to do more web uploads. I have five- about five per week, so I have another five due on Sunday. And just some like miscellaneous messages I need to do. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I was brainstorming some book titles yesterday, but I think that will have to come like way after the fact because I don't even know how many books I have in this series and that's gonna affect the naming convention too. I did want to show you some books I bought recently. I don't really buy um, physical copies these days, but these I had to buy, so I'll quickly show you. I bought four books. Uh, the first one I want to show you is this, Dante, the Divine Comedy. I learned about him when I was in Italy and he's actually one of the, I think, like early writers, or at least in Italy, that made their books available to the public because at the time um, only a select amount of people could read and also at the time Italy was fragmented um, so Italy as a country is actually pretty new um, because at the time it had like been broken apart and everyone in different regions were speaking different variants of Italian I don't even think it was Italian like the people in Venice spoke their own dialect the people in Florence spoke their own dialect and so Dante kind of I believe just picked a language that was like most easily accessible and like put it out. Don't quote me on that, I don't really know, but I figured I should probably um, read some of his stuff because I liked the story when I learned. I like I bought this because I prefer poems, poetry on print. I think it's just a little bit easier for me to read, easier for me to digest, and I like to take notes. So yeah, I got this one very excited. It's also it's also National Poetry Month, so I'll be reading this. I hope. I also got To All the Boys I've Loved by Jenny Han. This is actually like the library version as you can see. I am loving American Amazon actually. As, as in I like it more than Canadian Amazon. You get a lot of options. So I got this used for really cheap. 
and this option was cheaper than the Kindle. And I cried reading this already. I was on page 55 when I was like, I almost bawled my eyes out I was reading this with my parents like in the room. So I didn't want to be crying so much. Um, I really wanted to read like a sweet, a sweet romance. Not a lot of spice because I've been reading a lot of like spicy books actually. And I kind of just wanted a change. Next two books I got. Do you see the difference or the similarities in them? The two similarities are that they're both about being a tulip farmer, actually. And also, it's kind of fitting because right now the flowers, like the tulips, are blooming everywhere in Washington and the Netherlands, and I love them. And anyway, these are both contemporary romances. And look at, look at this. This is the actual true similarity that I wanted to see, which is their uh, book dimensions. They're literally the same size, which I didn't expect that, but that was good to know. I barely own any contemporary romances, like physical copies. That's why I wanted some just to, just to do some research. I wanted to see, well, you can see that the paper here is white. This one is like more of the cream, cream color. Is that what it's called? Is it white and cream? I, I don't really know. I ended up getting these two books for free because they were so damaged in the mail, like in the packaging. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I tried to like fix it, but anyway, I'm really excited for these two books. I'm gonna work out after work and do the other stuff. And <laughs> if I can write, uh, I'll, I'll write. I, I do imagine getting more than like 30 minutes, but we'll check. We'll check. I'll check in with you tomorrow. So it's Wednesday, it's the next day, it's around 2, no, it's 1.30, I have a meeting at 2. Obviously I didn't go into the office today, I actually decided to swap Monday with today because Fridays are chill and I'd rather go into the office when there's like no one there if I have to go three times a week, you know what I mean? Okay, anyway, so I have good news and bad news. <laughs> the good news is that, no, let's do bad news first. The bad news is that I didn't get much auger work done because I ended up writing I think I wrote like 1600 words. I'll show the pacemaker chart. That's what I've been using to track my word count. But again, I haven't, I don't really have goals or anything. I'm just like writing for fun. I'm still editing as I go. I'm not doing a huge edit right now, but I definitely need to figure out this like one element in order for me to move on to write the rest of the book. We're at 2200 words right now, I think, like 21900. And I'm a little bit nervous because this, we're not even, <sighs> I don't even think we are done with act one and it's already at 22, 22k pretty much. I have definitely another three more chapters before we get to the end of act one. And the other thing is that I think this book, oh my God, the, the cats. I think this book will actually have four acts and I know act three and act four really well. I don't know act two that well, but still I'm like really worried that I don't know. I mean, it's fine if the book is long, but I'm just worried. I just, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I don't, do people like reading long books? I'm gross. I literally worked 12 hours today. I think the camera is slanted, but I got the craziest news and this might not even make it in the clip because I'm supposed to keep it hush hush, but this video is not going out until end of April, so I don't know when they're actually going to announce it, but I am a finalist for the Aurora Awards. I'm trying to pull up. The email, it's so weird. I don't know why they send it to this email in particular because I have like a business email. That's what I use for YouTube. Um, like a more professional email. Then I use my own personal email for like writing stuff, like submitting. And I got this to my like business email. I, I kind of want to read it to you, but uh, I don't know. I, I like, 
I like froze for like a good five minutes at work because I checked my emails at work um, and then I was like what even is this poem so I reread my poem and then of course I was like ugh I don't like this but congratulations you have been shortlisted for Aurora's Awards final ballot you have been nominated in the best poem slash song category for this year's award please keep this quiet so <laughs> please get back to me right away this was my spam so i didn't see it so i gotta respond to him like today i, I want to respond to him by today yeah i'll keep this quiet we won't announce it until later in april so hopefully i can get to keep i can keep this clip in or else i'm going to take it out voting for this year's awards begin on june 8th and they close on the 13th um important note on who should be voting well cssfa which is like the organizer will love lots of people participating in the wars. We also want to strongly emphasize that these awards are for science fiction, fantasy, and horror fans. If you have family or friends who don't read these genres and just want to vote for you, we would appreciate that they did not. These awards are not to be giving out to those with the highest number of social accounts, but those that people who read these genres felt were best for that year. And I have a lot of things I need to send them. I need like a headshot. I haven't like, to be honest, I haven't felt like really pretty since um i quit my job i guess i haven't taken any single like nice photos with my black hair like ever since i dyed it black and now that's like really short and i don't like short hair myself um i'm like i haven't been in the mood to like take photos but i need a headshot so do i send them like a headshot from like when i had blonde hair or <laughs> i don't know i don't know what to do okay um and then it was saying that a virtual award ceremony allows all nominees to, nominees to participate and so I can do a pre-recorded acceptance speech <laughs> this is so serious this is <laughs> in conjunction with the main award ceremony on August 11th which is a few days after I turn 30 but how cool would that be I mean I'm just excited to be nominated I don't think I'm gonna win like I don't I actually don't want to win because then I'll feel like I gotta compete with myself and then I gotta write another poem and another poem anyway um nominees will be sent one co coveted nominee pins congratulations for being a finalist i don't know how they selected the finalists i read somewhere that i think, I think you gotta get nominated five times from different members and then after that the committee reviews the pieces and reads the pieces i don't know how this happened and i guess like here's the other thing i don't know how much of i want to talk about on here um and I'm not here to like, what's what's it called, like putting, putting anyone on blast or anything like that. Um, but I'm really glad of this publisher, like Heartline Spec. You should definitely submit to them. Um, and Augur too. I think a really good magazine will support their contributors. Will want to uplift their contributors' voices. And Augur who I am a volunteer for, and also Heartline Spec, they were really good at pushing these out to the world. Um, but there was this other publisher I got a poem published in, and not only I feel like they did the exact opposite, they took off my piece on their website so they can't be read for free anymore. And I think that's a big part in having like nominees and things like that not only did they remove the piece like they didn't even tell me up front and i don't want to i'm not putting anyone on blast here after what i do with NaNoWriMo but i kind of feel like i don't know a little bit disappointed that what i thought they stood for they don't and so the other poem i wrote for that magazine i don't like it more or less but i do have a special feeling like I, that poem makes me really happy the one i wrote for that magazine and it's a little bit sad to me that it doesn't get any attention and doesn't get any love not only is it taken off from their website but that magazine has not pushed anything out for their artists and their contributors so anyway like this goes back to also my community post that i think i'm really 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 picky as to who also this relates to trad pub too i'm really picky as to who owns my work and who owns my piece it's not just about that it's like are these people i want to work with you know it's like when you interview for a job and then the, the the interviewer is like why do you want this job but it's not like that it's not unilateral it's bi-directional 
you have to ask yourself why them why is this the publisher for me why do i want to work with this editor i think like when you're a new writer and for me too like you are so on board with like everything you just say yes and you can get really screwed over in the end if these people are not treating your work with respect anyway i've talked long enough nothing matters like this like just because I, I i literally got a rejection today from a short story it was a relatively nice <laughs> Um, rejection. I, I usually do share my rejection emails but this one I got was a little bit personal and I don't think the publisher will like it if I just like <laughs> like spewed out the rejection but I'll just I'll share a brief clip brief screenshot. I'm sorry to inform you I will not be accepting your submission for publication you're story to me to what I'm focusing on but I hope you find a home for my story and that writing this was worthwhile for me and please continue to submit to this publisher. I fell ill. <laughs> I hate getting sick. It's just such a... It makes me pause on everything I have to do. I was like starting to feel like I would get sick on Wednesday, but I just slept early so I didn't write on Wednesday. I just ended up sleeping early. And yesterday, which was Thursday, I was like totally fine. I didn't feel like I was gonna get more sick. And then today I woke up, my body was just like, nope, <laughs> you're not. My memory card filled up. What, what, what was I saying? Be sure to check out Scrintel. I have a link down below. You can use my code TI10 for 10% off your personal pro plan. You can tell my voice does not want me to be speaking. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.